everyone, welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you guys are having a lovely day wherever you are. Today I'm going to be talking about the disappearance of Aisha Degree. This case is so frustrating just because there isn't much information and a lot of it is just your own theories and what you think happened to Aisha. But without further ado, let's get into today's case. Aisha Degree was born on August 5th, 1990 in Shelby, North Carolina. Her parents, Harold and Aquila Degree, were married two years earlier on Valentine's Day, which is just awful because that's actually the day Aisha disappeared. Aisha had a brother, his name was O'Brien. Aisha was subjected to a fairly sheltered upbringing. Her parents kept their children's social activity fairly limited outside of school, church, and family. The children weren't allowed to watch much television. They weren't allowed to watch the news as their parents found it to be full of negativity and the family did not own a computer in the house. In the year 2000, she was nine years old and a student in the fourth grade. She was described by many as a timid girl who was polite but may have been intimidated by social and situation. Aisha's mother described her as cautious, shy, and content to stay within the limits that her parents had set for her and her brother. On February the 11th, her elementary school was closed. Some reports say that it was for President's Day, but in the year 2000, President's Day fell on February the 21st. So it's more likely that it was closed for a teacher's work day or something like that. That would explain why they had basketball practice later that day. If school was cancelled for a national holiday, then everything would have been cancelled like all after-school activities. Their parents were working that day, so they spent most of their time at their aunt's house, which was in the same neighborhood and just down the road from their home. Both Aisha and her brother had keys to the house so they could let themselves in after school, and their parents entrusted them to look after one another until one of their parents arrived home. On February 11th, their aunt would take both children to basketball practice. February 12th, both Aisha and her brother had basketball games. Aisha was described as the star player of the team. Unfortunately, her team lost the game and she was visibly upset. She was crying with her teammates and she blamed herself for the loss. But her parents said by the end of her brother's game, which was right after hers, she was back to normal and she was happy and joking and playing with her friends, which is pretty normal, you know, you get upset and then you get over it. On the 13th of February, Aisha and her brother went to their aunt's house from which they attended church and following church, the children had lunch and at their aunt's house, they were given Valentine's Day candy by their grandmother. So the kids were in a very good mood. They just received some candy, so they were very excited. Aisha's father, he had a second job and he wouldn't be home until around midnight. Around 8 p.m. that night, both children went to bed, they shared a bedroom. There was a storm that night and the power was cut off. The power was cut off because there was a car crash, and but it was back by the time Harold was back home, which was around 12.30. So now it is February the 14th, not only Aisha's parents' anniversary, but it is also the day that Aisha disappeared. So when Harold returned home, he said that he went to the kids' bedroom and checked on the kids and they were both asleep and that was around 12.30 a.m. For the next two hours, details are a bit unclear. Some reports say that Harold watched TV as usual when he arrives home late at night and went to bed around 12.30. Other reports say that after arriving home, he goes back to pick up some Valentine's Day candy and returns home, but again goes back to bed around 12.30. It doesn't really matter which one is true because both reports say that he went to check on the kids one last time and then he went to bed for the night. Sometime during the night, O'Brien wakes up and he just sees that Aisha went to the bathroom and she came back and after that he went back to sleep. A little bit later, O'Brien wakes up because he hears squeaking from Aisha's bed and he doesn't like open his eyes or anything, he just assumes that she's moving while she was sleeping and he goes back to sleep. Aquila on the 14th of February woke up at 6 a.m., which was a bit earlier than normal, but she did this for two reasons. A, it was her wedding anniversary, so she probably had some things planned, and B, because of the power outage the night before, the kids couldn't take a bath, so she woke up a bit early just so that she can prepare their bath. When Aquila entered the bedroom, she found O'Brien asleep in his bed, but Aisha's bed was empty. Aquila begins looking around the house, assuming that Aisha had woken up early and was just somewhere in the house. When she doesn't find her, that's when she gets really scared like any mother would, 
and she goes to wake up Harold. Harold then calls Aisha's aunt, asks her if she had seen Aisha, but she says that she hasn't seen her since the night before. At this point, Aquila gets really panicked. She puts some shoes on and then she runs outside and she checks on the car that Aisha was nowhere to be found. At this point, Aquila calls her mother, panicked and trying to explain that Aisha is missing, and her mother calms her down and tells her to hang up the phone immediately and call the police. And she does so, and less than 10 minutes later, the police are at the scene. The police arrived and they bought search dogs with them. Unfortunately, the search dogs were unable to pick up on Aisha's scent. It's thought that the heavy rain and the storm from the night before made it more difficult for the dogs to pick up her scent, which is weird because rain usually makes it easier for dogs to pick up the scent, but what made it more difficult was the rain combined with the heavy wind that occurred the night before, so the wind would have scattered the scent because of the wind movement. While the police were investigating the home and the dogs were trying to pick up on Aisha's scent, Harold, Aquila, and O'Brien were searching, were walking around the neighborhood trying to search for Aisha. By 7 a.m., most of the neighbors were awake and they helped search for Aisha as well. Police found no signs of forced entry and all the doors were locked. The police, family, and friends, neighbors, they all spent the whole day searching for Aisha and there was no sighting of her, unfortunately. They started searching very close to the house and then they started spreading further and further away. A mitten was found that police thought might have belonged to Aisha, but Aquila said that it did not belong to her daughter. Investigators discovered that her backpack was missing along with several items of clothing and this combined with the fact that there was no signs of forced entry made police think that maybe she decided to leave on her own will. And police don't think that this was a random occurrence. They believe that she packed her backpack ahead of time maybe even days in advance. Aisha's parents find this theory hard to believe as they can think of no reason for her to want to leave and due to her sheltered upbringing, she wasn't the type of girl to just go out on her own. Also, Aisha was very, very scared of dogs and storms. So if she did want to leave, surely she would have picked a different night where there wasn't a really bad storm. And also there was an expert on missing children or missing people. And he said that children don't, children don't start um, leaving home until about 12 and Aisha was nine years old. The first day missing, the media grabs a hold of the story and Aisha's photos are everywhere. Aquila appeals through the media stating that quote, she's my baby, just bring her back. If someone took her or somebody has seen her, just bring her back, end quote. Because of this, two witnesses came forward saying that they saw a girl fitting Aisha's description walking down Highway 18. Highway 18 is a two lane rural road that runs a total of 145 miles north and south. This was also the route taken by Aisha's school bus so it wasn't completely unfamiliar to her. The road was very poorly lit if lit at all at night and it must have been very hard to see. I'm sure the storm and the bad weather didn't help either. Two separate witnesses saw Aisha walking south alongside Highway 18 between 3.30 a.m. and 4.15 a.m. They saw Aisha wearing a backpack and a long sleeve white shirt and some trousers. Police confirmed the sightings based on the description of Aisha and the clothing that she was wearing matching the items missing from the home. Both drivers said that they were very concerned for Aisha, which I said this before, but there was a storm that night. It was raining. It was February, so it was very cold. And you see a little girl, a nine-year-old girl, walking alone wearing just a t-shirt. And you don't think to call the police? That is so weird to me. Like, you would call the police, right? And it's not like she was with someone. She was alone. I don't know. It's just really weird to me. Maybe if they called the police, you know, things would have been different right now. According to reports at the time, the only things missing were Aisha's backpack, trousers, and a pair of sneakers. One driver told police that when he saw her, he got closer to her and he just wanted to see if something was wrong with her, if she needed help, and he called out to her. This really scared her and she ran down a kind of hilly area from Highway 18, disappearing into a wooded area. And this was the last confirmed sighting of Aisha Degree. Candy wrappers were found in the shed along Highway 18, near where Aisha had been running into the woods. Along with them was a pencil, marker, and a Mickey Mouse shaped hair bow. Immediately police start searching the area for any signs of Aisha or any more clues, but they couldn't find anything. People think that Aisha entered the shed in order to take shelter from the storm, while others think that she was taken into the shed against her will. There wasn't any signs of a struggle in the shed. People question police as to why it took them three days to search the shed when it was the last confirmed place that Aisha was seen alive. 
A week after Aisha's disappearance, the foot search was called off after 900 man hours were used during the course of the week and they came away with very little in terms of fighting Aisha. People think that Aisha left her home by her own choice and she likely ran into someone with darker intentions and became the victim of foul play. Which makes sense because it was very dark, there weren't a lot of people so if someone did want to kidnap or hurt a child, you know, that would be the perfect opportunity for them. Also, I didn't know where best to put this, but Harold and Aquila, they were both ruled out as suspects early on, and they both passed a polygraph test. The next few months, the Degree family would make several public appeals in the media. They appeared on America's Most Wanted, as well as The Oprah Winfrey Show. Despite the media coverage, nothing came to light. Investigators continued working on the case, receiving daily tips, but none of them led to Aisha or any sign, indication, or where she might be. On August 3rd, 2001, so eight months? Yeah, eight months later, the first new piece of evidence in the case since her items were found in the shed would be discovered. Approximately 26 miles north from the shed along Highway 18, Aisha's backpack was discovered. A contractor was clearing a lot in the area to make way for construction of a house that was supposed to be built and he discovered a black garbage bag and he was curious about it and what was inside. So he opened it and saw that there was another garbage bag and inside of the bag was Aisha's backpack. And when he opened the bag, he saw that Aisha's name was written as well as a phone number. He didn't know the case, but he had just a bad feeling about it. So he wrote Aisha's name down and he wrote the phone number. And the next day when he was having breakfast with his wife, he told her about what he found and she knew the case and she immediately called police. Police searched the area trying to find Aisha or any other signs or clues for her. Aside from the backpack, they couldn't find anything else. The FBI took the bag into their possessions and took it for forensic testing. I read that the FBI never released the full list of items in the bag, but I also read that there were pictures of Aisha's family in it, so I'm not sure which one is correct, so I'm sorry. <laughs> Following the discovery of the bag, this confirmed to police that foul play was involved and whoever had abducted her decided to bury the bag. There's a lot of things weird about this. Whoever decided to bury the bag, why didn't they just burn the bag or throwing it away in somewhere where it was much less likely to be discovered rather than wrapping it up in two plastic bags as if trying to shield it from the elements around it like they buried it in a place where a house was going to be built like of course the area was going to get dug up i think this is what's so frustrating about this case is that there isn't much information and that's why it started to kind of grow cold investigators say that they continue to get tips to where Aisha is or sadly the possible location of her remains but all of these tips led to dead ends in 2016 fbi released a new statement that a witness saw a girl fitting Aisha's description getting into a green car on Highway 18 near the site where she was last seen. Cleveland County Sheriff said that the vehicle is now considered to be a vehicle of interest. I think it's weird that the witness didn't come to police earlier. The person could have easily destroyed the car or they could have sold the car. I think they would be very, very lucky to find it. There's a lot of possibilities and theories about what could have happened to Aisha, especially because there's so little information about what happened to her. Some people believe that Aisha left on her own will and decided to never return. And she's just out there living her life. And yeah, she's just out there, which I think her parents still believe this, which... Uh... I don't know, I don't think this is true just because she was so young and because of the bag, the backpack, I doubt she buried her own bag. I think that's a bit sad. Also, she seemed to live a pretty good life. Like, there's no reason for her to want to leave home. She did live a sheltered life, to be fair, but she was nine years old. I doubt she fully understood that, but there might have been something at school or at home that we just are unaware of, so... You know, that's also a possibility. Another theory is that she left her on, on her own will, but she was abducted. To me, this makes the most sense just because of the backpack. There was no signs of forced entry at the home. And she was alone. It was dark. If someone wanted to abduct a child or hurt a child, that would be the perfect opportunity for them. Not that I would do something like that, but I'm just saying... Another theory is that perhaps Aisha was sleepwalking. Sleepwalking isn't uncommon, especially in children. The idea is that she got out of bed, changed her clothes, packed her bag, left her home, locked the door behind her, 
and walked a mile down Highway 18 before being spotted by a passenger. And then maybe she woke up, but, you know, the guy who wanted to check up on her. And, of course, this would have scared the hell out of her, and she ran into the woods. The road wasn't unfamiliar to her, so maybe she packed her bag thinking that she was going to go to school. And that is when someone saw her and abducted her. Some people think that she was killed in a hit and run, and whoever killed her panicked and decided to dispose of the body and not call police and her body has not been found since. Aisha was reading at school a book that had the two main characters running away and going on an adventure. So many people think that she may have wanted to run away and kind of go on her own adventure. We don't know if she planned on going on her own or if she had a friend who she was planning to go with. Some people said that because of the basketball game the day before it, um, because she lost and she was so upset and she blamed herself for the loss of her team many people believe is enough in the mind of a nine-year-old to cause them to want to run away. Also, the timing that she decided to leave is very strange to me. She decided to leave when there was a storm, a really bad one, when she's afraid of dogs, she's afraid of the dark, she's afraid of storms, and it was 3 a.m. So some people think that she might have been manipulated by a family member or a teacher to leave. So now I'm going to talk about someone who a lot of people think had something to do with Aisha's disappearance. Donald Ferguson. In January of 2014, Donald was arrested and charged with sexually assaulting and murdering a seven-year-old girl. He was found guilty of this crime and sentenced to two life sentences. Donald was actually a friend of the family and he actually helped search for the victim that he murdered. Like, what a sicko. One year after her murder, Donald was arrested and pled guilty to sexually assaulting a 10-year-old girl. He was sentenced to eight years in prison and was released on October 1997. Donald was in South Carolina, where Aisha disappeared. Within five days of his release, Donald and several members of his family were arrested for murdering his grandmother. In April 1990, the charges were dropped because there was a lack of evidence. Aisha degree vanished in February 2000. Not far from Donald, not only was she within the age range that he would usually go for but also her physical appearance is very similar to the first victim the seven-year-old girl which is just so disgusting to say and his whereabouts were unknown at the time of her disappearance in november of 2020 an inmate who was convicted of sex crimes against children in 2014 wrote a letter claiming that asia was murdered and he knows where to find her these claims are under investigation and have not yet been verified. The FBI and Charlie's project have age progressed photographs of what she may look like today. Her family has moved on but never forgotten her and they believe that she is alive somewhere and they hope that she would come home. In 2008, they began a scholarship in her name and they also host an annual walk from their home to the last place where she was seen. And they do this to continue raising funds for her search. So yeah, that's all I have for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please comment down below your thoughts, what you think happened to Aisha. And please like and subscribe, please. And I will see you in my next one. Bye!